Hello. This week we're going to work on our avatar. In the end, the avatar will have a lot of customization options, but for now, we're going to go with some kind of preset avatar. And I've sketched something up with a focus on simplicity, so it won't take us more than a week to figure out how to build all this. Uh, when you're building an, a, an avatar for this kind of game, or for any kind of game, you're probably going to feel the urge to take something that you found somewhere. For example, exporting Second Life uh, models or trying to get models from your uh, Gary's Mod install or whatever. Those are legally problematic and they don't allow you very much customization. We're going to use something that's not legally problematic and that is MakeHuman. So MakeHuman's models are CC0, meaning that they're public domain. And that means that you can create a model in MakeHuman and use it in your game. The only problem, there are actually a couple of problems with this, but they're all technical problems rather than legal problems. The first big problem I've got with MakeHuman is that it doesn't give very good game characters. Uh, the problem with MakeHuman's characters is that they are very human-like, and they don't offer a good, distinct profile. You can't get a good silhouette. Uh, the bulkiest characters are not that distinct in silhouette from the thinnest characters. Um, and that's largely because they have a very set bone structure. So we'll have to watch out for that, and if we want to fix that up, we'll have to go with a very different bone structure. The other thing about MakeHuman that is an important limit is that the face mesh is a very human face mesh. Now this is probably the best face, face mesh I've ever seen when it comes to trading off uh, polygons for... Uh, for precision. This is a medium poly face and it is just extremely nice. But it is a human face. If you're going for an anime character or a monster, this setup won't work out. So that's a that's a problem with Make Human if you're trying to create a character that is, you know, anime or you're trying to get some kind of werewolf going. You're not gonna be able to use Make Human very well. Even if you try and deform it in Blender by stretching or, or distorting the face it can't stretch or distort very much further than uh, the the basic human face can without looking really awful. And that's because it's designed as a basic human face, and it's extremely good at that job. For now, all we need is basic human faces, so it works fine. The other problem with MakeHuman is that it has very bad secondary options. For example, these clothes. Let's say that we decided we were okay with our hero, come on. Let's say that we decided we were okay with our hero wearing a t-shirt and some jeans. And that might be fine if you're not looking very hard, but these are awful, awful clothes. You look at all that pop through and they're all like floating in front of the skin. Uh, they look like she's standing on top of the outside of a vacuum cleaner or over a vent over in the, in the street. She's, her clothes are all puffed up. Uh, and that's because these are floating clothes. The mesh inside of these clothes it still exists, and uh, and the clothes have to overlay on top of that mesh. To prevent pop-through, they've got to float a good two or three millimeters over the other ve over the other verts, and that gives it this awkward floating appearance. And not only that, they might not be bound to the skeleton in quite the right way. So as the character moves, you can experience pop-through. We're not going to be using any of these clothes. We're going to be building our own. We're going to be building these, and we're going to actually be integrating them into the mesh. It'll be it'll work out. It'll work out great. Uh, also, the hair options are basically non-existent. There are some decent hair options, but unfortunately, they are decent in MakeHuman, and they are terrible once you export them. Uh, and that's just because MakeHuman uses a specific rendering engine that's just not easily available to uh, places like Unity. So we're not going to be using any hair, we're going to be building our own hair as well. And the same is true of our eyelashes and our eyebrow, but we will go ahead and take all of the teeth and tongues that we need. So with this in mind, what we have to do is we have to set up our skeleton. And there's a lot of skeletal options, but generally basic.json is the best idea if you're trying to do mechanim animations. There are a couple of extra bones and a couple of silly things going on, but it's pretty easy to deal with. The only thing I don't like is the lack of a hip bone because this lack of a hip bone means that I can't, or pelvic bone, I guess you could say, means that I can't do high leg animations without them looking really awkward. If I try and do a high kick or a front kick, I'm going to get a lot of distortion in the pelvic region, and it's going to look awful. But I guess we can live with that, uh, or we can add in a bone there, whatever we need. 
the next thing you have to do is export it, right? So which one of these kinds of things are you going to export it to? Well, you might be tempted to do a Blender Exchange, but don't. Um, the Blender Exchange functionality, as far as I can tell, is bad. Um, it's it's just terrible. There is an advanced library which allows you to have Blender Exchange version 2, which actually functions, but I don't have it installed. Uh, you can do Wavefront, and that's very good if all you need is the meshes, but presumably you'd like to have the bone structures as well. Yeah, you could do Ogre 3D. I've never, I don't even know whether I've tried that or not. Um, generally speaking, the Collada file is, I believe, the best. Let's go ahead and just plug it in, uh, and we will go ahead and save it. I think that I'm still pointed in the right spot here. Yeah. There we go. We saved it. So now let's go into Blender here. Here's a Blender file I prepared ahead of time. It's just got this this box in it. We don't even care about the box. And we're going to go and import something. Let's import some Collada files. How about that one? So here we've got a very teeny tiny little character. And we've got all of the rigging it requires. So let's take this, this bone structure, make it x-ray and wireframe. And then we'll just go ahead and test and make sure that it works. Go into pose mode. And there we go. We are rigged properly. Everything seems to be working fine. Now, how does that look when we put it into Unity? Let's save this. Go into Unity. Grind, grind, grind. Just got a lot to import. There we go. And drop it in. Wow, it's tiny! That's okay, we can always scale it up. Uh, I should note that there are some fun errors with Blender and radically resized meshes, but we're not going to run into them today. Uh, so, as you might notice, Blender actually kept the skin material, as far as I can tell, and uh, it looks pretty nice, but these skin materials are actually uh, blank by default, so we don't get any sort of pore or makeup or lip or anything like that. They're just a, a flat color. Um, but if we go all the way back into Make Human, we could probably change that uh, material skin. We could change it to any of these other skins that we'd like. And in theory, it would import fine. Uh, I might do that off camera. I don't really want to do that on camera because I'm not entirely sure how it'll work out. Um, but, you know, it's it's not that critical. Now let's go into the bone structure here. And let's go ahead and I'll, I'll go ahead and show you that deformation I was talking about. So if I were to move the leg up in a sidekick, you can see how I get this really quite awful compression. And that's, uh, oh, by the way, there's no genitalia by default, in case you were wondering. Uh, but that compression is obviously just not suitable. Normally what I would do is, if I was going to do high kicks, I would have a hip bone, or sorry, a pelvic bone, and then the hip bone and the pelvic bone would work together to get that high kick to work out for us. Uh, the same thing is true of a forward kick. You can see how it has this really awful uh, compression happening. But there is no good skeleton for the lower body uh, in in the Make Human system. Uh, it, there just isn't one. And that's something you're going to have to live with. All of that aside, it doesn't take too long to make a character in Make Human and then export it into Blender. Uh, making the character actually took me about 20 minutes, but that's because I was explaining it at the time. I'm not going to bother to upload that video, though, because you can figure out Make Human on your own. It's annoying, but straightforward. It's not nearly as nice as just building it uh, in, a, in a character creation kit would be. You've got to, like, adjust very precise details. Anyway, if we go back into Blender, what we'll be doing in the next episode is we will be turning this Blender file into a, an actual useful character by uh, adding hair and clothes. Uh, I think that I'll probably do hair first, so I'll see you next time.